Hey guys, it's Holly. So today I wanted to take a look back at one of the original 2005 Goblet of Fire sets, which is probably one of the most expensive Goblet of Fire sets, and that is the Rescue from the Mer People. And this set was given number 4762 and originally had 175 pieces, yet still looked pretty substantial, at least in my eyes. And at the time of release as well, this set retailed for just 20 US dollars, which really wasn't that much, especially considering if you want to buy one now, especially sealed, it's going to cost you between like 300 and 400 dollars, even used ones are ridiculously expensive, which mostly comes down to the exclusive minifigures that are in this set. And overall, I just felt like it was one of the better older Harry Potter sets. Here is the rescue from the Mer people all put together and it definitely screams 2005, but I still feel like it's a pretty solid small set, even by 2022 standards. There's definitely some really interesting pieces and some very basic building techniques, but I feel like this overall stands as a really, really good set. And whether you're gonna be looking at this from a, you know, sort of time of release sort of thing, or a, I guess like fresh eyes, modern day Lego take, I still feel like this set is pretty solid. So first up, we have second task Harry, who has this beautiful face print to sort of represent the gillyweed on him. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It is very, very hyper detailed as well, especially for 2005. His torso print, I mean, it gets the message across. It is pretty basic though, but one thing I did love about these sort of early 2005 second task minifigures are the sort of little like board short things that they've got going on. Like it's literally just a hip piece and they sort of called it a day, which I find absolutely hilarious. There's no leg printing or anything like that. Like Harry is just wearing a pair of Speedos. Now to represent his little flipper feet as well, there are some of these orange flippers. I kind of wish that they were flesh toned, like they sort of do stick out, but at the same time back in these days, I don't really expect Lego to have known that that was going to be the case. So I think it works perfectly fine. Harry as well does come with an alternate face, which is just him smiling. Next up, we have Ron Weasley, which is a brand new redesign in terms of his face and a slightly different hair color for him, which is more of that sort of like burnt, darker orange color. Otherwise, he is very, very simple. There is no back printing. However, he does have a double-sided head, one of which is sleeping perfectly, sort of capturing, I guess, this whole scene in general. And the other is a really, really creepy face that makes him look really, really old. I'm glad this face didn't last too long because I just don't think that this shows off Ron at all. But otherwise, I really like the torso on this guy and he is exactly the same as well that was featured in the 2007 Hogwarts Castle set. Same almost goes for Hermione except she still has that same sort of short scruffy haircut that she had in her original minifigures but otherwise her face and torso and legs are all the exact same as that 2007 Hogwarts Castle and just like Ron she has a sleeping face as well as a sort of more modern happy smiling face which again like Ron is a face print that I think makes her look kind of old. <laughs> Now moving along, we have one of the Black Lake Mermaids who looks appropriately quite menacing. She has this beautiful long green tail, which I think looks fantastic. It's very, very simple, as well as a matching torso print. And I love the continuation of the print on the torso and the fins. I think it looks fantastic. It is appropriately very, very creepy as well, which I love. Even the face print, I think they did an amazing job on. I think really the only thing that doesn't quite translate to what was actually showcased in the movie is that hair, but even then, I think it works really well for a minifigure and along with her as well came this really nice blue spear which wasn't really exclusive to the set but it's not particularly too common at least these days and last but not least and probably one of the most interesting minifigures from this set is Victor Crumb as a shark now you can't really tell unless I spin him around a little bit that he is in fact a shark because at least from the front their mold does not really look that good however there are some indented eyes and as you can see mine has sort of been a little bit chewed up I bought this set and it was in appalling condition. I had to replace a lot of the pieces, but this is one that is quite expensive and is hard to find, I guess, in this set. So since it wasn't too bad, I did end up keeping it. But aside from the shark head, Victor Crumb is a pretty basic minifigure. There's really not a lot going on with him. He's got a really nice torso print, however, and just like Harry is sort of wearing those like speedo type of designs when it comes to his legs, his head as well is the exact same as the other Victor Crumb minifigure from the Dumbstrong ship, which I think looks really good and pretty accurately depicts the character. Now in this set as well, Lego were kind enough to give you an alternate hairpiece in order to stick on Victor Crumb and make it look a little bit more human-like, less underwater challenge -y, and overall I think just a really solid minifigure. 
First up in this set was this tiny little build of a boat. It really is nothing special and uses very minimal pieces, but I guess it was a pretty neat inclusion. But you can actually stick multiple minifigures in here and kindly enough on the box as well. This will remind you that this boat does not float. It also comes with some simple oars and is really, really basic. It doesn't really fit in with the rest of the set though, given that they are underwater the entire time. Like there is no sort of depiction of the surface level besides this boat existing. It really feels like a sort of, I guess it was just thrown in there for extra parts. It's nice and all, but really does not fit in with the rest of the set, I feel. Next up is our first part of the leg floor, which is this little structure here. It's a very, very simple build, but overall I really like it. I think overall it's really interesting with this set that they went for sort of like, a, I guess like a nice blue mixed in with navy and even light blue to depict the sea floor rather than I guess like a gray or a black. Like I think it really just sells the fact that this is within the ocean specifically for pieces like this that are meant to just sort of be sea floor rock. Now there is a really nice piece of seaweed, which is in a translucent color on the top which I really really like. It also comes along with a red lobster and underneath there is a little trigger here where I guess you can put a lobster or a minifigure or a mermaid or whatever and just push it out like so. And it doesn't really tell you all what to do in the back of the instruction manual but if you really want to throw a lobster like that I guess you can but otherwise I just see this more as like a decorative side piece to the set. Then lastly, we have the main structure, which like a lot of Lego sets of its time has a lot of, I guess, just like really big pieces and a lot of archways. Overall, I think this is a really nice design and really properly as well depicts the scene that it's trying to showcase. I mean, with this, you get that perfect arch, which is in the background. You also get a section to have the minifigures that are sort of waiting to be saved, which is really cool, as well as some more ocean animals and just, I guess, like some flame pieces in order to be seaweed. I think the color scheme works really well as well and it's just very simple and small it can fold up really neatly this can sort of be flipped up and down and adjusted and there are some play features as well built in with this main structure which i think is really impressive of a set this size now the main thing I guess you sort of do with this build is stick Ron and Hermione on these little green plates of this main structure here. However, one thing that I find kind of interesting is that the plates only have like a one stud gap or really I guess like one and a half studs. So Ron and Hermione's hands sort of clip each other a little bit and one of them ends up looking a little bit wonky unless you I guess sort of adjust their arms so that they can stand side by side perfectly. Now both of these minifigures will sit here and they really only tend to be at the bottom unless you push this Technic rod down at the back of the set because when you push that down there is this little piece underneath on a hinge joint that will push up and sort of have them float away or be ready to be rescued. However that piece doesn't actually stay down so you've sort of got to launch them up in order to save them which is a play feature in of itself. So again, if you push that down with force, both of the minifigures will go flying and I guess sort of need extra saving now considering they are just lying on the ocean floor like so. It's a pretty neat play feature, although part of me wishes that they could just like stand up the whole time, which I feel like is something that doesn't really happen with this set. Since in the movie, they were sort of suspended on chains and kind of floating around there. And that's one thing that I guess isn't really reflective in this set. However, that whole launching feature is actually pretty neat and I really enjoy it. It's really simple and you can kind of have a better look at it if you look through the bottom of the set where all of these archways are. You can see that it's just sort of a plate on a hinge that pushes up. It's very, very basic, but a pretty fun play feature nonetheless. This whole base is built up really nicely. The only part I don't like about it is these extra kelp accessories considering I just knock them off all the time. There's also some more sort of transparent cones under here with some of the knife pieces attached to them. I'm not really sure why that was included, especially since you can't really access it all too well. Besides, I guess, include a little bit more extra build and some decoration. I mean, I love the inclusion of the octopus. It really sort of closes off this giant space otherwise because it would be quite empty. And also I think just really cements the fact that this scene is entirely underwater. There's a lot of sea creatures in here, which is something that you often see with Lego sets that are based in the the water, whether that be from the Atlantis wave or the Ninjago or sea bound sets or things like that, like you often see a lot of sea creatures. 
But heading back over to the main building, there is this little sort of built up archway and then one of those giant old archway door pieces in that dark green, which looks really, really neat. I love how simple it is and it really, I guess, just helps keep this set's piece count down low while also feeling like you get a little bit more value for your money here. But overall, as you can see, this main portion of this build is very, very simple, but I love the fact that I guess it can work really nicely in terms of like creating a scene and creating a display, but also as well providing a lot of play features for kids. So that is the entire set and I definitely do not think that this is worth the sort of modern day price tag that people are putting on it, whether that be like $200, $400, like to me, that is just insane. I get that there aren't too many of these sets available around, but even just for the exclusive minifigures, I really don't think that for majority of people, this set is going to be worth shelling out the money for. At its retail price, absolutely, or definitely if you can find a really, really good deal on it. Otherwise, I feel like if you're just a casual fan of how Harry Potter and you don't really care about having every single set, you should probably put this money into a different retired set if that's something you're after. But let me know what you guys think about this set down in the comments below and I will be doing a comparison between the two second task sets as well once I get my hands on the new one. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below and until next time, I'll see you later.